This is The Rewind, and today I got a special guest. I want y'all to know he's an influencer, he's an activist, a comedian, a motivational speaker. His highs, his high energy branded, semi improvisational. Oh. Improvisational. Improvisational. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> Crowd work makes him one of the most popular and original comics in the country. He has worked with some of the biggest names in comedy, including Cat Williams, Mike Epps, Earthquake, DC Curry, some more and many more. His career has taken him through doors, through the doors of Comedy Central, The Last Comic Standing, and the host of other comedy shows. He's hip, irrelevant, quick on his feet, a true crowd pleaser. Give it up for Eric Kimbrough. Yeah, yeah, and that's hip, irreverent. See? I'm irreverent. I get it wrong sometimes. Maybe it's okay. Sometimes. We good. We here. So, I got I got one I got one issue. What's the issue? Where's hype man? And the hype man. Yeah. <laughs> Where's hype man, hey, man? Somebody wrote that for me, so they didn't know. They don't know my early uh, 1990s. Where you, you know, come before from? This is man. where you come they from. Don't, yeah, 100. percent And I don't deny it at all. 100. percent man. Well, sir, thank you for joining me. You know we had. I thing trying I to get know, this man. set up. I know, let me say, let me I apologize. <laughs> it's my fault. We we're supposed to do this, I don't know how long ago. And uh, he set the date, he set the time, and he was calling me, and I wasn't answering the phone because I was asleep. <laughs> and then when I woke up and called back, like, who is this? He's like, man, you're supposed to meet me. I was like, oh, damn, I forgot. I'm so sorry. And I felt bad. <laughs> I tried to cash out him gas money and everything, man. I felt so bad, but we here, and I wasn't gonna miss it. And I appreciate that he's here. So, first question I have to ask. Yes. Because, uh, you know, when I first met you, you know, it was hype, man. Right. But, growing up, what did you want to be? Man, when I was growing up, I always, it's, it's, the, it's the flip. I always wanted to be like in the movies and acting and entertainment and all of that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily want to be a comedian, but uh, let's say this, when I went to college, I went to college because I wanted to be a news broadcaster. I wanted to be on the news. Ah. Yes, but I didn't want to be a journalist though. <laughs> you know, They go hand in hand. I didn't want to be a journalist because I'm not that nosy. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And back in the day, my uh, interpretation of a journalist was the people that was chasing people down the street, like, hey, let me ask you some questions. Let me, right. you know, knocking on their door, and then they would show people, like, get out of my yard, get out of there, throwing water on them and all that. I was like, man, I'm too cool for that. I don't want, I don't want to do that, bro. I don't want to do that at all, man. So, yeah, so that's how I, I came to be, you know, getting in the comedy where I always knew I would do something in entertainment, okay. you know, some type of form or fashion, okay. you know. So you wind up going to U of L. Yeah. Uh, for those who don't know, proud Noob. Noob, yeah, 100%. Cap Alpha Sapp Attorney Incorporated, founded 1911. <laughs> That's 1911. Dang, we old now. We ain't even the 1900s no more. 1911. You know, I went over 1900. 91, <laughs> how <have> you say <laughs> Fall 91, you know what I'm saying? Back in the day, man. Just another pretty ass nope, you know what I'm saying? Japan, quick plug, let's get it, baby. I love Yo, it. Yo, can I cuss on here? I don't you want to start cussing. Hey, okay. look, look, this right. is the rewind. Okay. We are rewinding what we know. Okay, so. perfect, because I don't want to start a bunch of cuss words and you be like, hey, man, what I you know. doing? Do let's you, get do it. you. So, being at U of L, yeah. How how did how did the hype persona start for you? With like what 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 kicked it off? What kicked off the hype, man? And now for those of y'all don't know, I was the first, I was the original hype man. I'm saying in the world, but some people won't say Louisville, Kentucky, just because everybody said Flavor Flav was first. <laughs> but they wasn't doing it on parties like we was doing it in parties, baby. So I was the first hype man. 
Man, what kicked it off? I tell the whole story, man. Is uh, Weedy, me and Weedy was next door neighbors in Threckle Hall, best dorm ever at the University of Louisville. Those, I was in room 200. Those who don't know, Threckle we're talking Hall. about DJ Weedy. DJ Weedy. And that's W E E D Y. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta specify right. Right. the, no, the cause, spelling cause of the look, name. Cause somebody texted me the other day. He's like, "Hey man, uh, you think Weedy W H E A T I E a DJ my party?" I was like, "Who is that?" You know, I'm like, "Who is that, man?" And, uh, but yeah, it's DJ Weedy, man. We was next door neighbors. He lived next to me in the dorm, and uh, he was in the music. Okay. He was the guy whose room he went in. And he had racks on the wall with all the tapes in each slot. You know what I'm saying? Man, you know they don't remember what a tape is. They don't know what a tape is. It's a little <laughs> tape, black, had two circles in it. Right. You put it in a thing we call a tape player. Right, right, right. So right, uh, right. he had all the tapes, man, with all the music. So whenever anybody on campus wanted the hottest song or wanted, they wasn't, we wasn't even calling them mixtapes back then. You know, mm -hmm. they was just tapes, you know, a cassette. Like, you go to Weedy, you bring him a 90-minute tape, give it to him, and he would put all the hot songs on the tape yep. and get it back to you, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so what happened was, man, one day, we had a, uh, we had a, what you call, we had a, uh, one of our friend's parents went out of town and lived downtown, and they wanted to have a little party, so we threw a pop-up house party. The house party. We had a house party. Y'all know about house parties no more. That was a thing, right? So Weedy bought all his cassettes to the house party, and then he DJed the party with literally an earphone and two cassette decks. He was pushing play and pause, play and pause, play and pause. And then that's how he kind of started, you know what I'm saying, getting okay. into music. So let's fast forward, take it that summer when he went home, he bought two turntables. Okay. He bought two turntables and stuff, and uh, he said he wanted to start DJing. So I guess over the summer, I don't know, because I was here, he was in Lex, I was doing my thing, whatever, I was buck wild, running the streets, and then when we came back to college, he had two turntables and some speakers, and he used to play music and scratch and do all that and mix in his room and all of that, right? And so when I joined the fraternity, it's how it all started. Okay. When I joined the fraternity, we was having a meet, and they was trying to get a DJ. And see, they don't want to tell you, I got him his first DJ gig ever in the history of the oh, earth. That's where that came from. Yeah, okay. I got his first okay. DJ gig ever. Don't nobody want to give me the prize. I'm the first everything. I'm the GOAT around here. I'm the GOAT. I've been the first everything. And so, uh, look, everybody gonna be mad. You ain't the GOAT. You ain't start this. They gonna be calling me. They gonna be talking about me bad. That's Whatever. what we want, that's what we want. So, uh, right. Just so y'all know, if y'all want to dispute any of this, hit me up, hit me up. And just so y'all know, I have to say this. We are at the Palm Room. They graciously hosted us to be able to have this interview. Right. So definitely want to shout out to the Palm Room. Ever want to get a chance to come down? They got events all through the weekend. Definitely uh, on the Thursday, they got the um, uh, this little game we play. They have uh, Friday and Saturday nights that they do something. So definitely come and check them out. But yes, please go ahead. Yeah, you're, let you're me the say, goat. You're the goat. This, yeah, this is a great venue, Joe's Pond Room. It's one of the best black owned venues in the country. And it, they also, uh, last year, Thanksgiving allowed me to host my Thanksgiving show here, which was so sold out. I had to turn people away. They had to block the street off because there's so many people trying to get here. That's goat talk, you know what I'm saying? It's just goat talk, <laughs> baby. We talking goat tell talk, them, baby. Tell them, tell them, You know em. what I'm saying? But nah, so when I joined the fraternity, you know how it is, you're in a fraternity. Uh, you're in the second best fraternity. You know how that goes, there, huh? man, you know how that goes. We hey, have me. First, the, <laughs> the oldest and the coldest. Man. Let's, let's make it clear. The oldest and the coldest. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, somebody got to try it. Somebody got to try it. You know, I'm in a frat so nice, we named it twice, man. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing, though. So uh, when we was in the meeting, I was just like, uh, yo, my partner DJ. And then nobody want to get him to DJ because they was like, nah, we don't DJ. I'm like, nah, he really DJs. Whoa, 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 whoa. So what happened, it was this dude on campus named Steve. And Steve knew how to scratch, mm. right? So they was tricked. They thought that he could the DJ because he could scratch. And then plus, back then I think it was like 150 for the DJ or something. Steve only wanted $10 
and uh, like some drinks to get in the, for the party, right? So they went with Steve, nah. right? And right, in the right. middle of the party, it was so terrible, man. It was terrible that we didn't end up helping him. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So then, like uh, our next little party that we had, I was like, yo, man, we gotta get weedy. We gotta get weedy, man. Like he can do it. He can. And then, boom, I convinced the bros to get weedy. So we got weedy for the party. And that's how his DJ career popped off. And that's how my hype man career started coming about. Okay. But that wasn't how the hype man started, though. Well, well before, before you say that, because I heard a story about how it first started. Yeah. The very first time. So the very I, first time. I, 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 I want you to walk me through this now. I want you to walk, walk me through this. Through because. It. I heard, and some of y'all don't know these places that we're naming. I can get, get you the information later. But from my understanding what the story I heard, it was at Caddy's. It was at Caddy's, 19, in the 1900s. And I want, I want you to describe what Caddy's <laughs> is. But in that first time, I was told that, um, you didn't want to talk. You you were scared of the mic. I was. You you, you didn't want that mic. That I mic. Didn't, what they say now, they want no smoke. <laughs> you didn't I want. I didn't it. want none of so the please smoke. I didn't walk want me none. through the first time you on the mic. I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna walk you through the whole process <laughs> of what happened, bro. Okay. Okay. All right. DJ Chaos, and these is all facts. Y'all can check facts. DJ Chaos was DJing at Club Caddies. Weedy was at Club Paradise. Okay. Club Paradise used to pop. It was more college style, right? Mm-hmm. Caddies was more hood style. Okay. Right? Okay. So what happened, these dudes on Paradise, the dude went to U of L and he on Club Paradise. So that's back when Louis had these fake <laughs> <laughs> NBA All-Star parties and shit, right? <laughs> so everybody had a party. It was a fake NBA All-Star party, but okay. it would only be like some U of L players and maybe some uh, UK players okay. in there. Okay. You know, and maybe the only UK player might have been Derek Anderson at the time. You know, okay. so this is like putting y'all back in that time frame or whatever. So when we had uh, Paradise, Paradise is popping, 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 going hard. Then like one weekend, it just fell off. Boom. Like, it went from being you couldn't get in to, hey, is it even open? Like, the next weekend, you know wow. what I'm saying? Like, empty. So after about a couple weeks of Paradise not getting no people in it, mm -hmm. so one day, me and Weedy, I remember it was like on a Friday or something. Thursday, Friday, we had his crib. They didn't even tell him, I don't, if I'm recalling, you might want to fact check me on this. They didn't even tell him that they was letting him go, and they had hired chaos. So it's kind of like right? swap. They swapped, right? Okay, okay. So what happens is the dude from Caddy's called Weedy and was like, hey, man, we kind of in a bind. Mm. Like, I need you, you need me, you lost your gig, I lost my DJ. Okay. Blah, 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 right? Right. So can you come out this weekend and uh, do my club or whatever? And so uh, Weedy was like, yeah. So me and Weedy, we used to hang out with anyway. And then he was like, man, won't you ride with me to the club? You ride with me to the club just so I can have somebody to talk to because I don't know nobody. Okay. I'm like, okay, that's cool, man. I go with you, bro. Like, whoop, whoop, whoop. So, mind you, we get to the club. Club's in uh, Newburgh, whatever, but Caddy's was the poppinest club in the history of Louisville, Kentucky. It'll never be another Caddy's. I'm just going to say that now. Since, since he won't say it, I would say it. One of the things with Club Caddy's is this. There was literally a Cadillac sitting on a pole in front of the It was place. a Cadillac sitting <laughs> on a pole. Let, let, let's, let's, let's be clear. Let's, let's be clear, uh, right. Was it pink? It was, it was a pink Cadillac. Pink Cadillac. They were sitting, sitting on, on top a pole. Of a pole in front of the club. Yeah. Just, just to be clear. Yeah. In Newburgh. But go ahead. In Newburgh. And so when we went to the club at night, Weedy's playing music and all this. People's coming in. People's coming in. It's trickling in real slow. People's coming in. And then he was like, he grabbed a microphone and handed it to me. And I said, what's this for? He <laughs> said, nah, it's a true story, man. I was like, what's this for? He said, hey, man, you might have to say something, you know, in case when I'm transitioning music or something or if something mess up, 
you might have to say something until I get the music on, right? Okay. And I said, okay, cool. I ain't even tripping. I'm like, cool. So then he's playing music, and then he stops. I want to say to go into the slow music or change the progression of the music, right? Right, right. And he's like, say something. And I grab the mic, and I go, uh. I said, man, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I said, I don't know what to say. And he busted out laughing, man. And, you know, Weedy's like, man, it, 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 it cut a song on real quick. And he's like, dude, I was like, man, I don't know what to say, man. I, I ain't never did this before, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never did. He said, man, just say anything, just say anything. And so then, like, on the next thing, when the music stopped or whatever, I was like, yo, uh, Welcome to Club Caddies, whatever. We got DJ Weedy. You know, we gonna have a good time tonight. You know, who's in the house? Something like that, right? Because okay. I wasn't a hype man yet. Yeah, okay. Right? I wasn't even a hype time. man. First this is the first time. So okay. I'm, I'm square. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm lame, you know? I'm just talking like, yo, like uh, the dude would come up and say, hey, man, tell him we got drink specials at the bar. Okay. You know, if you, if you purchase, back then they used to have a red cup. So if the females paid $10, they would get a red cup and they could drink free all night long. You know what I'm saying? Oh, wow. They could ref But it was only like uh like what what is that? Uh, a whiskey sour and an amaretto sour, sour or something, right, you know, right. some shit like that, right? So maybe a tangerine sour and all that. <laughs> get a so, gin and juice. Yeah, yeah. It was something <laughs> silly like that. It wasn't like no major drinks, you know, it wasn't right. a high end. So I started announcing that type stuff. You know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. So then Let's just fast forward. So now we going to Caddy's every week, and it's sold out. Every, I'm talking about if you got there late, you might be in the line for three hours to get in. Like, the line would be from the door around the building, like three, four people deep, deep. you know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Around the building and out in the parking lot and shit. Like, people used to jump the fence to get in, dog, it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it was one of them spots, and it was like it's every weekend. Like, wow. every weekend, it was like a holiday party, you know what I'm saying? It's back when people was dancing. It's back when you had to go ask a female to dance. You had, we had yeah, play a set. Yeah, do they dance anymore? They don't even dance no more, dog. They just, <laughs> they just hump on each other. This is when he play a set. It might be some R&B music, okay. then a transition. He would stop, play three slow songs, then might come back okay. with some booty yeah. shake music, uh -huh. stop, play three, so that, then it'd that, be that some coaster, yeah, that, it'd be that ride. type stuff. So that's when we was doing that. So after the club was jumping, now months is passing, like maybe a month and a half, two months is going, and now I'm on the mic. Every night, now I'm loose, you know, I'm just on the <laughs> mic. Ah, I'm throwing jokes, now I'm comfortable. I'm yelling at people, and we became a thing in the city. Like, everywhere we would go, they would be like, yo, you the dude who be DJing, you the dude on the mic. Like, where y'all yeah. gonna be at? It became that type of thing. So, Weedy started getting booked for all the parties in the city, and I was always going. Because initially, I ain't gonna say I was the crate carrier initially. <laughs> I left that part out. That's why I just used to carry the crates to all the parties, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to all the college parties, I carried all the crates. I carried the speakers. It's back when he had these big ass uh, Serwin Vega speakers. We yeah. used to put them on the back of my partner, uh, Big Mark's truck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> somebody would ride like on the back. Parties, somebody wild, ride wild. on the back of the truck. Yeah, somebody would ride on the back of the truck with the speakers in the crates and shit. <laughs> nah, you know what I'm saying? So it was all that type of stuff. And then, so we started becoming a thing in the city. Like okay. we doing all the hot parties. Well, he's getting all the hot parties. I'm just the. Ah, you coming with Weedy? Like, yeah, I'm the, I'm the tag along dude. You know what I'm saying? I'm the crate carrier. So but, let me ask you a question. With 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 the, with the hype and how it's starting to build, can can you explain what that that interaction is like with the DJ and hype man? Because to your point, what you said earlier with um, when it came with Public Enemy, right? Yeah, he's a hype man. Yeah, he was talking, but he was with an MC. Right. This is different now. It's different. Yeah. Hype man with a DJ. Yeah. Can can you explain how that dynamic? With, with you and Weedy? With the dynamic with me and Weedy is, Weedy don't talk. Weedy don't talk. Well, he talks, you know, he's not a mute, you know what I'm saying? But like at parties and clubs, he don't talk. He was strictly about playing the music. 
Mm-hmm. He was strictly about, you know, like, I'm just gonna play hot songs. His whole goal is to get you on the dance floor and keep the dance floor packed. That's his whole goal. He's more analytical. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Weedy's analytical. Like, he's thinking ahead. You, I can see him with his eyes. He's thinking, thinking, thinking. But in between the thinking, I was the voice of his thoughts, right, so to right. speak. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he took you on a ride, and I was the narrator. Right, right. You know what right, I mean? Right, right. But me and Weedy was so in tune, when he would play certain songs, I would go in the crate and get the lift up. It's when you had to lift the records up. <laughs> I would lift up the next digging. song. Crate digging. It's like to the to the older ladies out here watching. It's like when you go to the DAV and you're looking for a particular shirt and you dig it through the <laughs> and you dig it <laughs> through the crowd, through the clothes at, at the thrift store. That's how it is. I used to be in the crates, looking, 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 pulling up records, pulling up records, putting down records that he already played, and I would know pretty much what he was gonna play next. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. we hung so tough. I could hear the mix coming. Well, with that being said, that actually leads me to another question I was going to have. Did you have a process, like, uh, before the parties, during the parties, and after the parties, was there a process that you had or you and Weedy had together? No, uh uh-uh. It It was off the dome? It was just off the top. It was just... We had hung so much anyway prior to. Because y'all was... Y'all lived beside each other. We lived beside each other. We hung out every weekend, every day, pretty much in the dorm. Right, right. So we had hung so much prior to just talking and kicking it and hanging on the weekend, we was already connected. You gotcha. know what I'm saying? We was already connected. But at first, I didn't I didn't know his rhythm at first because I wasn't like the hype man. I was just his homie who carried the crates to get in the parties free. That was my whole thing. <laughs> right. But right. I went to so many parties with him like that, I knew what he was gonna play. Right. I right. knew his rhythm. I knew his vibe. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I could feel it. I knew when he was gonna turn the party up. I could tell when he's getting frustrated. Right. When I when I need to come in a little heavier and shit and give him a little break. I know when he need a water, right. a coke, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it wasn't no nah, it wasn't like we was at his he had he lived in an apartment. It wasn't like we was at his apartment rehearsing, but Looking back on it every day, damn near we was at his apartment playing music. Right, right. So it was like we was rehearsing, you know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah. So, you basically sitting there listening. As you listen, you probably already in your head say, you know what I was saying. Yeah, this. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then I would know when he's gonna hit it, you know, on his drops and all that. I would know when he was transitioning for me to uh cut the music in the middle of his scratching. Sometimes I would cut the music or his mix, cut the music. Yo, everybody get on the floor, whatever, whatever I was saying. What, what, what? That's why I started that before Nori and all that. I had that, what, 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 okay. I had all that before they did, bro. Uh, like I always tell Weedy, if we lived in another city, a major, major city, doing what we did here, oh, uh, we big time in hip hop. Oh, I believe that. Because all the stars that came here was like, man, y'all niggas, y'all, why, y'all, damn, y'all rock like everybody. Who kept, right. Cause he did all the hot parties. Right. Everybody like, dog, oh, y'all killing this woo woo woo. So, so with some of those parties, it, it's two part question. Because I, I also recall before you know I became the DJ that I am and the things I did, I would come to these parties. Can you re- recall some of these parties? Uh, like where they were all, at? Oh, bro, I can recall all the parties. Well, what, what, what in your opinion was was one of the best ones? And where was it? The best parties used to be, to me, used to be at the palace. I remember that. The, the best parties used to be in the palace, bro. In the lick jams. Yeah, the lick jams, but not only them, just them NBA all-star parties. Yeah. Used to be real hot. Uh, like they used to be real hot, man, cause it, cause when they would have them, even the licks, when the licks blew up, they would have the city out. Like the city would be out. Shout out to the four, four, four one, one five, five. four one five the, licks. The licks, four, four one five. five licks, and they all real cool. But they was a bunch of nerds who got together and started having <laughs> drunk parties that went from their apartment to the biggest venue in the city. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking about sold out, sold out. Everybody in the city came out. You couldn't even get in the the best parties hands down in the city. Yep. But uh, like far as our best part, oh man, we had so many good parties. I'm gonna tell you one of the best parties we ever did to me, the vibe wise was we went to Henderson, Kentucky. 
Oh, wow. Henderson, okay. Kentucky, now. And we went with, uh, rest in peace, my man, Static Major. We went with Stevie. And uh, one of the, damn, I got, forgot dude's name, light-skinned dude. Was throwing a party in Henderson, Kentucky, him and Stevie. And I rode, I think me and Weedy rode up there with Stevie, like me, Stevie, and I want to say Mark is with us. Uh -huh. You know, Mark is on a car lot or something now, you know what I'm saying? And uh, we rode up there, they was doing a party, all that, man. They had it roped off like the VIP section, like the dance floor was right here, then they had a rope, and this was the VIP. <laughs> <laughs> And it might have had like a fruit tray or something over there. Right, right, and like yeah. back then, parties was like ten dollars, yeah. but they was paying like twenty five to be on the other side of the yeah. rope. It was like three people on the other side of the rope, but it's like really like, bro, just step right here, you back. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, it's right. crazy. So now nah, we was partying so hard in Henderson, bro, that when the party was over, they start throwing bottles <laughs> up at the stage because it was over. Like it was going so hard because it's a small town. You're right. Stevie was already hot, you know, right. with Pony and all of right. that, with the Leah stuff and all of that, mm -hmm. man. And they song had already came out. You know, Player had already right. had that song that was on the, uh, the, the videos. Not Cheers, well, Cheers to You was probably out. I don't think that was out yet. Okay. But that, uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, damn, you know what we want? It's the, whatever, man, this shit still go hard. I had to look it up. I can hear it in my mind, but I can't sing, so I ain't even gonna mess them up like that. But they was already kind of bubbling, you know, right, everybody knew right. who they was. Man, all the chicks in Henderson was out. They was on us. It was like star-studded celebrity type stuff. You right, know what right. I'm saying? And when the party was over, I remember they was mad. They started fighting. They was throwing stuff. Nah, it was the best time ever, bro. <laughs> that was the best time ever, man. So, yeah. uh, you, you alluded to this earlier with the chance. I have to ask, do you remember what some of those chants were? Anything crazy, anything Some of the wild? wild? I, I have one in my head which used to throw me off when you would do it, but people loved it. But can you remember any of your chants? Shit, not really, man. Say which one you, you think. The, the, the one that everybody knew, and the first time we ever heard it was like, are they about to fight? No. Why does everybody love this? You remember it Everybody say, fuck you, we did. <laughs> fuck you, we did. You remember that? I remember that, dog. <laughs> that was so hot. Because that would be like, that right there was his motivation. You know what I'm saying? I used to motivate him, dog. Like when he would be going, and everybody would come up and be like, oh, man, we going. Like, oh, he's killing it. And I used to be like, man, fuck weed. He ain't doing nothing. <laughs> and we used to be like, what? And that's when I started doing it. I started doing that at Caddy's. I started doing that at Caddy's because Caddy's would be so wild. Like, people would be yelling up at the DJ booth. You know what right. I'm saying? They would be yelling shit. And it might be like, ah, oh, shut up, nigga, with all them golds in your mouth. <laughs> you know, or something like that. You know what I mean? Right. Or like, damn, look at old girl, whoop, 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 whatever. And then so it started being a thing with me and him, more so me than him. You know, because I was standing up on top right, of stuff. Right. Everybody's buying drinks, and I'd be like, Weedy, play this song. He'd be like, nah, not yet. And I'd be like, man, fuck you, man. Play the song. <laughs> you know, play this stuff. Play the red record. That's why I used to call it the red record, man. That's, uh, uh, dang, what was that? I can hear it all in my head, but I don't know the words. And then, so I started doing that, man. That's how that started, man. I started chanting that, but that was... That would be when the party is at an all-time high. Right, right. Everybody's kicking it. Everybody's having fun. And then it would be like, fuck the DJ. Like, fuck <laughs> you, we day. And I would cut the music off. i say, fuck you, we day. And then i hit it, and they say, fuck you, we day. Right. He would start laughing. <laughs> then he would go hard, you know what I'm saying? All right. Then around then, that's when, uh, what was that, the percolator would come up. Hey, man, we used to have a ball, dog. So yeah. you said, it, and, and you alluded to it, so I'm going to just go ahead and ask the question now. Did you get any issues with some of your chants and, and, and roasting people in the club or nah. you know, roasting women nah, or man, it, guys wanting to fight? No, nah, I'm going to tell you, dudes used to want to fight, but it would be over the, the attention that we was getting from females. Okay. It would be like, fuck them niggas, they ain't nobody, you know, You're right, that yeah. type of shit. But no, nah, I ain't never, man. I'm going to tell you what it's like. It's like now with me doing comedy, when I talk about people in the crowd, they the ones who love me the most after right. the shows. So it's like back then, 
when I would talk about people in the crowd, they would love it, but they might be like, fuck you, nigga, like, whatever. <laughs> right, right, but right. they would love it, though, because right. that was part of the turn up then. Right. You know what I'm saying? That was part of the turn up. Like, I would see girls and stuff, like, say, you know, in Louisville, we slow. Somebody have on white after Labor Day or whatever. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. Like, ah, look at her over there with that all white bodysuit on after Labor Day. You know what I'm saying? It would <laughs> right. be like, or like, look at him with that silly shirt, you right, know? Right. But it would be part of the, part of our thing, man. And we, I just went back and forth with the, whatever vibe the crowd was going. But you can feel it turning, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can tell when it's about to be some fighting and. It was about to turn, because every night, every every weekend, yeah, around about 2.33, <laughs> yeah, it, it would turn into it's a like, roadhouse oh, in there, oh, man. Oh, hey, we, yeah. I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling yeah, it. we'd that. be like, man, I got to slow it down, man. Right. I got to slow it down. Like, because we would just go hard, man. But by then, that's when I was officially the hype man, bro. And let me tell you how I got my name, the hype man. OK. Because I still, I didn't have no name forever. I was just. Eric Kimbro. on the mic, yeah, yeah, Kimbro. That was it. Everybody's be like, Kimbro, you on the mic, you on the mic. So one night, rest in peace, my partner, Lamont Settles, man. He uh, was from Paducah. He was in the club. He was in the club, and he came up to me, and we was going hard that night. Like, I think it was one of them nights where uh, dudes, all the little dope dudes used to buy out the bar and set all the beer and shit on stage. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, they would have tables. Yeah. Like, like, we up here on this stage, they would put a table up there, and all the beer that they would have, they would put on stage. Like, yo, and I'd be like, yo, if y'all want some beer, y'all can come up here and get drinks, it's free. Everybody would look around. Then one person wait, would wait come get one. Get one yeah. person <laughs> come get one, and everybody be like, oh, it's cool. Then everybody right. would get it, right? So my uh, my dude, Lamont, man, rest in peace, he's be like, he's call me Err. That's how I used to talk. He'd always have a drink, have his hat real low, real tight on his head. And he'd be like, Eric, I'll be up on the mic. Da, 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 da. Everybody, everybody would come in and give me that. That was the thing, because everybody wanted a shout out. Right, right. So, I mean, every person that walked in the club would come be like, Eric, or like the girls right. be like, hey, E. And the dudes be like, what's up, boy? What's up? Shout me out. Here's a hundred dollars, shout me out. Every three songs, you know, here's fifty dollars, man. Say what's up to my peoples in town. Let them right. know, you know, like that. So my partner Lamont came up and was like, Eric, what's up, man? Eric. And he's like, man, what's your name? I like, my name's Eric. He's like, nah, what's your name, man? And I was like, Eric Kim, bro, man. <laughs> and then he was shaking my hand real hard, because he shook your hand real hard. He was like, nah, what's your name on the mic, man? I was like, Man, I don't have no name on the mic, you know, like this <laughs> Eric, you know what I'm saying? He's like, no, nah, man, you Eric the hype man, just like <laughs> that, dog, in the club. And I said, what? He said, you Eric the hype man. And then uh, he said, let them know who you are. And then after that, I yeah, start saying I'm right. Eric the hype man. You know what right. I'm saying? And it just, it just oh, and then people growing. start saying it's the hype man, Eric Kimbro, or Eric the hype man is going to be on then. Then when they start doing flyers, mm -hmm. instead of just having DJ Weedy, they start putting and Eric the Hype hey, Man Kimbro mm -hmm. on the flyers. And that's, and that's how that transpired and shit by then. We was smoking hot by then, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we was scorching by then, boy. Did you, uh, did you, was you a hype man for anybody else? Uh, DJ wise or even promoter wise or host shows no. back then? No, I hosted shows. Like I hosted, like I hosted U of L Step Show for a bunch of years. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And it's so, it's so crazy. Until one year, somebody, I had a big rig. I don't drink. I didn't drink. I drank in college, but I didn't drink like that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, when I went to the Step Show. I stopped at the store. I bought a big rig, and I had it in a paper bag, right? Right. And so I'm walking around in there with the big rig in the paper bag. And so whoever was on the committee, somebody went back and said that I was on stage. I was in there drinking beer, beer had in a paper bag. So again, like don't man, worry about come all on with the nigga hey, shit. And hey, we having a good time. I told you, we at the palm room, graciously hosting. Everybody having coming. a good time. <laughs> palm room is where everybody is your friend. <laughs> Just know that when you come in, you are family. When you come into the palm room, so it is what it is. But we got this. We Go good. So I uh. 
So I had this paper bag and I was carrying my big red and I didn't take it on stage or nothing. I just had it prior, before the step show. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Walking around and stuff. I wasn't even thinking about it. And then uh, somebody afterwards that hit the uh, committee president or student government, whatever, right. said I was drinking beer and shit right. at the step show. So that was one of the last times I hosted gotcha. the step show because of that. And I was like, nah, I don't even drink, man. I had a big red, yo. But by then, it was too late. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it coaster. was too late, you know. But after the step show, yeah, I was getting fucked up back then. We just kicking it. <laughs> yeah, so, man. So with, with, with some of those places that, that you were going and, and you and Witty was together, any of those times or places, either one, that, that once you got that call, you already knew what time it was. Like, uh, either Weedy called you or you got a call and say, hey, Weedy, such up, want us to be there. When you got a call, what was the one or the place where it's like, oh, yeah, we about to, it, it's about to go down? Now, really, to be honest, back then, like, well, shit, wasn't nobody really calling me. They would ask me about Weedy, then I had to hear him, then they had to call him or whatever. Cause he was really the guy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But uh, really, man, it was just mostly. And I think back then, it was most. It depend on who was having the party. Okay. So you know what the, I'm saying? Wasn't the place. It was, it was who. It was who was having the party, bro. Cause I think you know? I think it's kind of sort of still now. It's like party. It, go anywhere else. It's the DJ. Right. Right. But in Louisville, in Louisville it's, it's the promoter. promoter. It's the promoter. It, it, it's always been a yeah. promoter driven it's, it's city. It's a promoter driven so. city. Hundred so, percent. I'm gonna ask this question then. Red barn. Red barn. Now, now you know you're about to start some shit with this. <laughs> Who had the hype party at the red bar? Oh, no doubt, Cap Alpha South Turning. I don't do that. Don't Cap do Alpha that. Cap Turning. Don't Cap do that. Man. Back in them days, <laughs> back in them days, we were shutting it up, man. We had all the baddest <laughs> chicks coming from out of town, from everywhere, from every college. They was in the city. We had bros from everywhere coming in. Cap Alpha South founded in 1911. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just another pretty ass noop. You know what I mean? We had the hottest parties, man. Really? Don't, don't let this uh, continue. I need to hear we your side of this. We had the hottest parties, man. No, I'm gonna say this. Back then, I think, back then, I think everybody had a good party mm -hmm. because it was pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Only mm -hmm. difference was whoever was collecting money at the door. Right. I think, it, like, for me, and, and again, this is me coming in and seeing how y'all was doing it. Right. And then once I became part of the fraternity, um, uh, that black and old go. Um, <laughs> one of the things that, that me and my sons would do is, like, we didn't care who had the party. We talked about every party because we wanted everybody in the red barn. So right. for those, and I'm going to use your, your term, for the 2000s who don't know, right? <laughs> red barn was where all the co college parties were. Yeah, yeah, it's 100%. Down. Sold out. Sold out. Everybody. Line to Miller Hall. Well, you know yeah. Miller Hall is no longer there. Right, yeah. I but when Miller Hall was there, it, you know, line, line to Miller. Line out the door. Yeah, but that's everything. where all the college parties were. And it, like you said, it didn't matter who was yeah. having it because Everybody was there. Everybody was there, bro. Everybody was there. And that's what MPAC was like. Right. You know. But I'm going to tell you this, though. And this was before you got to school. The best Red Barn parties back in the day used to be on Wednesday night. Really? We would have a Wednesday night party, and I think it was free for everybody. Or if it wasn't free back then, it was like $2, right, maybe right. 3 but Wednesday night during the week used to be the best. I part. did not you know always, that. You always came up. You always came up. I did up, not bro. know the Red Barn Wednesday, had Wednesday night. Wednesday night so, parties was the best. You back know, then. At, at one point you had O'Malley's, which is no longer here. You had right. at one point it's called Tailgaters. Which Tailgaters. Here. They had college nights on Wednesdays, but I never knew the Red Barn. No, had the Red Barn. When I first and this was back in the 1900s, got to U of L. The Wednesday night party was the best part to me. Best party hands down because it was strictly everybody from school. Right, right, right. Well, right. nobody really from out of town. You get some out of town people come because right. it was hot. But it was strictly everybody on campus. And after I lived in Threckle, which was right across the way, the closest dorm to it pretty much, after the party, everybody would be in Threckle's lobby. Right, Sold right. out. Right, You right. know what I'm saying? 
So the Wednesday, hey man, the Wednesday night party at U of L, the Red Barn. Hey, and I'm gonna tell you this, cause it's been over 30 years and uh, I never did it. I never did it cause I don't do stuff like this. <laughs> but this one you could get with some of the chicks on the yard that you couldn't get with regular. You catch them on that, you catch them on that Wednesday night. <laughs> shit, what, what used to be Luther song? Creep, 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 creep. <laughs> On that Wednesday night, baby, that was the night. Cause it was so, it was so random. Right. right but it was right. so like, cause you had people who were studying, yep. so they might not go, or they might finish studying, come, yep, right. then go back study, whatever. You right, know what I'm right. saying? Or you just had people just hanging all day. Right, like, right. shit, this Wednesday, let's go to the, uh, I ain't got no class tomorrow, right, let's right. go. My class ain't till two. Oh, fuck it, let's just go. You right, know, right. it was the Wednesday night party. Plus, it's on campus. You didn't have to worry about didn't driving have to worry or work. About didn't have to get a designated or driver. Didn't have to worry about nothing. any of that because it's literally on campus. It's literally on campus, yes. Oh, wow. Walking distance. So, with, with, with all the success you had and, and, and with Weedy and, and campus, off campus, right? Like we can go through the the numerous clubs that used to be here that's no longer here. No longer here. How did that transition come, or what caused the transition to go from hype man to comedian? Money. Hundred <laughs> percent. Money. Shit. Hey man, I tell you this: didn't nobody want to pay me. Nobody wanted to give me no money, which I wasn't looking for no money, money. Right. But right. then at the end of the night, I'd be like, damn, everybody got some money but me. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Weedy used to be like, well, ask, tell the promoter to pay you. Promoter used to be like, tell Weedy to pay you out mm-hmm. of his cut. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it was like, okay, cool. So ain't nobody paying me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But I, I mean, I would, don't get me wrong, I would get money from dudes doing shout outs. Yeah, right. Like, right, give right. me a shout out. Give me a shout out. Right. Give me a shout out. Here's here's a hundred. Here's, tell Weedy. If they was like, tell the DJ play my song, here's a hundred dollars, I give it to Weedy. You right. know what I'm saying? Or 50 or whatever. But if they was like, yo, give me a shout out, here's a hundred dollars, right. I pocket it. Right, right. You right, see right, what right, I'm right, saying? Right, right. It was that type of shit. Or, you know, if it's like that's hey, protocol. That's yeah, protocol. yeah, 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 yeah. So when uh, they would be like, yo, tell the DJ, play my song, man. I'd be like, bro, he can't play your song. It's going to cost you. Mm-hmm. And then I'd be like, hey, man, what you going to charge him play? He'd be like, tell him, give me 50, you know, or give me 25, whatever the money right. was back then. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's cool. But when they would come up to me, they would give me five and give me a 20, mm-hmm. or give me a 10, or give me a 50. Depending on how drunk they was, they'd give me a 100 and be like, man, just shout me out every time I walk through. Gotcha. You know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah, just back, back. Gotcha. Sometimes you might walk out there with $300, $400. Sometimes you might walk out there with $25. You right, know what right. I'm saying? So, yeah, but it was that type of thing, man. I was just like, yo, I was just like, man, shit, I ain't getting no money, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm having a good time. Don't get me wrong. My benefits were so great because through Weedy, I got in all the hot parties. Mm-hmm. I was... I would say a crucial part to a lot of them, 85, 90% of the hot parties. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Got to be on stage with Biggie, Scarface, all of them. Gotcha. We got to hang out with my dude, uh, let me clear my throat. DJ uh, Cool. Uh, we went out to eat, we hung out, we changed numbers, all of that. Got to be with Montel Jordan back when he was real hot, cause right. he's a noob. So then we clicked Very on good. that shit, talked, all that, man. Uh, Man, everything that was hot that came through the city, I got to be a part of through Weedy. Right. And not only be a part of it, got to be backstage, you know, in the clubs, it with the entertainers, walking in with them. Mm-hmm. So, and being a hype man, I got in everywhere free. Gotcha. So everything that was hot, I could walk in. Right. The front door. Right. No pat downs. Right. No nothing. Oh, that, that's Kim. Let him through. Let him through. No standing in line. All of that. Dog. So, 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 so I'm gonna ask the question. Did it come with the uh, grab the mic charge? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna yeah, talk to the mic? Yeah, yeah. The mic charge? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So every time I showed up, it was definitely that. Yo, you getting on the mic? Come on in. You getting on the mic? You get? I be like, I might, I might, I might. You know what I'm saying? No, and I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I might, yeah, I might do a little something. You, but then every time I would come in the club, no matter who the DJ was, they'd be like, you want the mic? Right. You want right, the mic? Right, right. And I'd be like, no. 
because I only really fool with Weedy. But right. I mean, several times I got on a mic with somebody, but not right. like I would with, if with Weedy, Weedy was right. DJing and right. stuff. You know, it might be a little shout out here and there, a little, yo, we about to get it started. Da, 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 da. Let's go, let's go. We got DJ dudes, whatever, whatever, right. you know. Boom, and all that. But now nah, it was the best times ever, though. That was the best times ever doing that. But what it did do, and I tell people this all the time when I do my interviews for comedy, is that got me ready for comedy. I didn't even know. I was preparing myself for something, you'd... For something that I wasn't even into to, right. to be a comedian. Right. That, it gave me the presence of mind holding the mic, how to use the mic, you know what I'm saying? How to talk aggressive on the mic, when to pull back on the mic. You know, being gave me it being quick with it. Yeah, all of that. Because when you're in the club and you yelling and niggas is drunk and they like, yo, fuck you, nigga, what you go? Nah, big head nigga. Da, da, woo, woo. <laughs> right. You know, whatever, you, whatever. And then it got me, and people used to come up to me after the club and be like, oh my God, you so funny on the mic at the party. And I would, I would try to be, but I wasn't trying to be funny. Right. I was just having fun. Like, we was having fun. We was in college, bro. We was just having fun. And so that really, really prepared me. And all jokes aside, when I say the money, it wasn't even crucial like that. But all jokes aside, that really prepared me to go into my next phase, which was doing comedy. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And people was tripping like, man, you don't be on the mic no more. You do, you do comedy? Like, yeah. <laughs> if y'all know him like I know him, yeah. yeah. They like, yeah. So you got to walk me through this. Just so you had your first moment on the mic with, with, with high, being a hype man. Right. Walk me through the first time being on stage as a comedian. As a paid comedian or as an open micer? Okay, we'll describe both. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, people don't want to keep it real, but keep it real. It's, it's terrible. Now, I'm going to tell you my first time. Uh, doing an open mic was 2001. Now, mind you, back in the 90s when Spike Davis was here, okay, and he was doing shout all the shows. Shout out to Spike Davis. Yeah, shout out to Spike Davis, he man. Still Spike, comes Davis, Spike Davis, if you don't know, is the godfather of comedy in Louisville, Kentucky, whether he's here or not. It's like everybody be like, oh, who's the best, who's the best, da, 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 da. It's Spike Davis, then it's everybody else. And I need to get Spike in here, too. Yeah. It's big shout out. Hey, how you doing, baby? It's, uh, it's Spike Davis, then everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he really set the foundation. He's really like, anywhere I go today and I say I'm from Louisville, the biggest of names, like, yo, you know Spike Davis? I'm like, yeah, Spike Davis. Like, man, that's my man. Tell him I said, what's up? Woo -woo -woo. From DC Curry to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So yeah, shout out to Spike Davis. But back in the 90s, when he was doing, putting on like open mics and doing comedy and stuff, I would always say, oh, I'm going to get on the open mic. Mm -hmm. But I would get there and punk out. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I'm too cool for that shit. You know, right. I thought I was cool in a fan, bro. I was like, I'm too cool for that shit, man. I ain't about to do that, man. Nah. But it was really just me getting there and being scared. Like, right. I ain't getting ready because I would see somebody not do good. Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, nah, I ain't getting ready to embarrass myself like that in the city, man. Right, right. So, uh, so what happened, let's fast forward, man. I, everybody, every since, well, let's rewind and go forward. Ever since I was little, even in school, I wasn't a class clown because my demeanor don't let me be the clown. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I was always funny. Right. Like, if my teacher would say something, I would raise my hand and I would ask a question about what she said, and everybody would fall out laughing. And she just always, my teacher, all of them, he's always be like, you trying to be funny? I'm like, no, I'm serious. And the class was like, ah, he's funny. And then I would get thrown out of the room. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you're the I class would, clown without being the class yeah, clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be something like that, you know. Even when I would be at work or something, even up through college, I remember one time one of my uh, teachers in uh, high school was like, you miss your calling, you need to be a comedian. And I was like, what? Old white lady in Alabama. Like, you miss your calling, you need to be a comedian. You are hilarious, you know, talking to me like yeah. that. And I'm like, ah, whatever, you keep putting me out of the room. You know what I'm <laughs> right, saying? You keep right. sending me to the principal's office. So it was one of them things. So even knowing my friends and all that stuff, just 
being around people, they know I was, they knew I was funny. You know right. what I'm saying? So let's fast forward. It's 2001. My partner had moved to Dallas in 2000. Okay. He was one of my best friends and stuff. Uh, he died last year as my best friend. He moved to Dallas in 2000. So remember when 9-11 happened, right? Yep. He moved right before then. Okay. You know, like in the late 2000, then boom. And uh, me and him was on the phone, and he was like, man, you should, you should uh, fly to Dallas. He's like, Dallas is live, man. You should fly to Dallas. You should catch a flight to Dallas. I remember it was about 3 in the morning. He was like, you should catch a flight to Dallas, man. It's live. They got this, 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 that going on. I was like, man, shoot, as long as Ben Laden's loose, you won't catch me flying a kite. <laughs> I ride the Greyhound, and we busted out laughing, laughing because right. at that time it was hot. You right, know what right. I'm saying? Oh, we busted out laughing. And then he was like, nigga, I told you, you need to do comedy, man. You bullshitting. You need to, uh, that's your, that's you. That's your dream. That's your life. That's you a comedian, man. You need to do And I'm like, man, for real, we on the phone. Like, for real, and he's like, yeah. And I said, man, I don't know about all that. But when we got off the phone that night, I remember I was sitting on my bed. I was sitting up on the edge of my bed. And I grabbed a notebook, and I wrote down what I said. Mm -hmm. I wrote it down. And then I called the comedy club the next day. I didn't even tell nobody. I called the comedy club the next day to see when they open mic was. And it just so happened it was the next week, right? Mm -hmm. it, was the last, it was the last Tuesday of the month. OK. Right, show up and go up. They put me on the list. I didn't tell nobody. The only person I told, I told two people, my mom and my sister. I asked my sister to go with me. She said, no. I asked my mom to go with me. She said, no. I said, all right, I'm going anyway. So when I went there, it was about 40 people for the show up and go up, bro. Like, it was all night. And this is back when you could smoke in the building. Right. So I'm sitting in the comedy club, the comedy caravan. Ah, oh, it's smoky. I'm in there choking. I can't talk. My eyes is burning. I'm like number 37 on the list. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We had to be there at 6.30. The right. show started at 7. And the room is packed. It is completely packed. So as the night goes and people go, people slowly start leaving. Living, right. Slowly, now it's 9 o'clock. Now it's 10 o'clock. It's 11.15. I still ain't went on. The room's getting light and light. By the time I went up, it might have been 10 people left, if that. And it was like the three people that was left and the people that was there to see them. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And the show was so long, they had even changed host. A whole different person was hosting <laughs> the second part of the so, show. Right, now, right. right. So I remember I went up, they gave me three minutes. I went up there and I told my joke about not catching a flight. You know what I'm saying? Like not catching a flight and uh, riding the Greyhound or whatever. And I got nothing. I ain't get no laughs. I ain't, I ain't even get no crickets. That's how quiet it was. I ain't even get no crickets. I think I got the. <laughs> that was funny. I think I got that. You know what right. I'm saying? It was so terrible. I was supposed to do three minutes. I was literally up there for like a minute and a half, maybe two minutes of complete nothingness. And I was like. Thank you. My name is Eric Kimbro. <laughs> <laughs> and when the MC came up, I was like, yo, give it up for Eric Kimbro. It was just like, <laughs> you know, that You're dead, right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. that wasn't good clap. Okay, like, yeah. Whatever. So then after that, man, I remember I walked outside the stage, walked up the aisle, walked through the door, walked up the steps to go outside, walked down the ramp, got in my car. I remember I sat in my car for about 10 minutes, like, that shit sucked so bad, bro. <laughs> like, I remember I was just sitting there like, damn, like, that shit was terrible. Like, oh, man, I wasn't no good at all. Like, and definitely not being like hurt. the hype, man. Yeah, yeah, like, it hurt. But then I was like, I loved it. I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> like, I can't wait to do it again, man. Like, that, like it was a different kind of feeling, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like it, but then my thing became the people that I seen up there, they weren't necessarily funnier than me. They didn't have no personalities. They weren't funnier than me or nothing, but they knew how to do it. 
Right, right. You know, so getting on stage, a lot of it's not being funny. A lot of it is not how to do it on stage. Mm -hmm. Like being a hype man. A lot right. of dudes could yell on the mic, but you don't know how to do it right. to make the crowd go. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? And so, so there's differences in in the two, but they still have the same the same background, same, the same yeah, bloodline yeah. of because you controlling the crowd. Right. So when I get on stage, when I used to get on the mic at the parties, Weedy set the vibe and I controlled the crowd. Right. I right. took them on up. I could make them fight. I could make them calm down. You know, he could make them fight with the music. He could make them calm down. Mm -hmm. But so like if he was getting them hype. You know, I was the one that pushed you into them. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. You know how they get ready to fight and they just stand there. I was the one to push you into them. Right. You know, that was me as the hype man, you know. Or if he slowed down with the slow music, you might be standing there by yourself, and it might be a chick over there standing by herself. I could push y'all together. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right. hey, girl, you dance, he dance. That's my man right here. Come whoop, 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 you know, da, da, da. You looking good, he looking good. Get on the dance floor. And then y'all be like, uh, all right, all right. Then the dude would always be like, my man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Boom. My man. So that's, that's comedy, bro. So when I'm on stage and you in the crowd, I'm just taking you on the ride because I'm going to take you up. I'm going to take you up, get you ah, ah, ah then I'm going to come down, talk to you, talk to you, take you back up, take you back up, bring you down. Right. So that's the thing. So here's the kicker with it. So the next time I signed up and went, told my mama to go with me. My mama was like, all right, my mama was real cool. Like, my mama was my best friend. She passed away two years and eight months ago. It's my best friend ever. And so, yo, they wildin' over there, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's all right. We, this is what happens when you're in a nigga spot. <laughs> Doing an interview, they don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. <laughs> they right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, they closer than us. But it's all right. So the next time I went, went up there, my uh, my mama took me, right? Mm -hmm. So when we got there, I forgot my money at home, and she didn't have a purse or something with it. It was something silly, you know what I'm saying? Like, she had a purse, didn't have a wallet, I forgot right. my money. Like, being on the show, on the open mic, I got in free, and they gave you a free coat and some popcorn. Right. And I was like, damn, mama, let me go in here and see if I could talk to somebody to get you in, at least, if not to get you in, just to get in to see me, then we could leave, right? And my mom was cool, like, okay, man, that's cool, don't worry about it. Uh, I'll, be at, I'll be in there in a minute, or you just go in there and I figure, I sit here, I figure it out. So I go in the club, they got the list, right. they giving the comics the instructions and shit. Next thing I know, my mom was in the club. And I was like, how'd you get in here like that? She said, oh, I just told him I was gonna sign up for the open mic, right? And I said, for real? She said, yeah. I said, oh, that was smart. I said, you ain't gotta go up, that's cool. She said, yeah, I just told him so I could get in, then I'd give me a Coke and eat some popcorn. Right. So I'm like, cool, right? right, right. So nigga, we going, the show's going, they call my name, right? Uh, I go up, I do, I don't do good, but I don't do bad. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, it's I'm not just, crickets no yeah, more. Yeah, it's, it's not, not crickets. No. Yeah, I'm getting, this, I'm getting some ha ha, ha ha, yeah, boom, right? So after that, I was like, shoot, mama, if you ready to leave, we can leave. She's like, nah, we stick around, we stick around. So nigga, when they got to her name, they called my mama to the stage. <laughs> and she got up and I said, you gonna do it? She said, yeah, I'm gonna do it. And she got up and went on stage and fucking killed it. You hear me? <laughs> Smacked it. I'm talking about my mama was hands down the funniest person of the night. And nigga, look at this camera. I was pissed. <laughs> I was mad as shit. <laughs> you hear me? I was so mad, bro. I wasn't mad like, like, fuck you, but I was mad, like, what the fuck? Like, what? <laughs> My mom was on stage killing it, bro, like, just being her. Right. She was killing it. Everybody was laughing. Ah! They was like, keep going, girl, you know, all that shit. And she was, the only thing she did wrong is, you know, you got a time limit. They give you the light, right, you right. got to get off stage. Right. She kept going. She's so probably they, talking about the yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah, she did. <laughs> so they end up cutting the mic off on her, you know what I'm saying? And then it was funny, because when they cut the mic off on her, she was like, oh, y'all cut the mic off on me? Did that mean it's over? Well, kiss my ass then, I'm out of here. <laughs> hey, dog, everybody died laughing, right? 
Oh, they was clapping, woo, 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 woo. They was screaming like, yeah, all that. <laughs> and then when the when the host got up there and said, give it up for uh, June Isaac, they was like, yeah. And I was sitting at the table like, what the fuck just happened? I was like, mama, this is my dream. This is what I want to do. What are you doing? This is what I want to do. She was like, oh, you was all right, boy. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> hey, man, I miss my mama so much, bro. Hey. But no, that is a true story. You cannot make that up. That is a true story, man. So then, so after that, that's when I start going. Mm -hmm. That's when I start going. So after that is when I was like, you know what? It wasn't about me being a comic. It was about me trying to figure out how to be funny. Right. That was my whole, I just wanted to figure out how to be funny, man. My ego wouldn't let me let it go until right, I right. was figuring out how to be funny. Like, I'm like, damn, these dudes is getting on here. They only have no personality. You know how you talk to somebody like, he's dry as fuck. Yeah. How is he funny? So my ego was like, nah, nah you got nah, nah, to gotta figure this out. And right. then once I figured out the formula, because it's a formula to it, then boom. I ain't looked back since, bro. Hey, that's a great thing. So yeah. do you have, uh, so I'll say so far and moving forward, do you have any dream, dream shows you would like to do or someone you'd like to work with or so, wish you could have worked with? Uh, No. Well, I'm not going to say no. Here's what I'm going to say. Every show that I've had in comedy has been a dream show because Everything I've done is by far past my expectation of what I thought. My whole goal, which I thought was the comic dream, was to host the open mic. That's what I thought was the thing. Right. Like, that was my goal. Like, the dude who was running the open mic, I was looking at him like, man, he's the man, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. like he the dude, you know? I didn't know, I didn't know. I didn't know he wasn't shit, you know what I'm saying? I thought that was the the thing, like, right. he must be, because in my mind when I started, I was like, okay, if he's running an open mic, he must be the guy that everybody knows is funny. Yeah, 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 looks up to and all of that, which is not the case at all. But back then, I didn't know, because when you talk to him, He's like, yeah, I done work with this person, this person, this person. He's like, damn, for real? Like, boom. So my goal was to host the open mic. So long story short, I was doing that like in two months, month and a half, was hosting open mic. Then my goal was to, ah, okay. I host a regular show. I want to host a regular show. So three months in, I wasn't even three months in, I got my first paid show which people wasn't getting, they wasn't getting paid. Like, that was taking years. Like, you talk to people, they be like, yeah, I didn't get a dime until I was six years in. You're like, what? I was three months in. But I mean, it wasn't nothing like, uh, it was like $50 for seven minutes, right? Right. Dude was like, they booked me on a show over in Indiana. It's like uh, the book of Tom Sobel. He passed away recently. Uh, but if you watch a lot of Steve Harvey things, he talks about Tom Sobel how he got him his gig mm -hmm. to get to the, the money, to get to get the plane to go to the Apollo, right? Mm -hmm. So Tom Sobel hit me up. He's talk crazy, He's like, Eric, uh, this is uh, Tom Sobel, and uh, I have a gig for you now. Uh, he used to do that <laughs> in between. You Anybody who mentioned him uh, be like, oh, he called me and be like, Brandon, uh, <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> So my first gig was $50 for seven minutes. I was like, nigga, I'm gonna be rich. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah, I was like nigga, I'm gonna be rich. I was like, well, I was like, man, if I'm getting paid $50 every seven minutes when I get on stage, I'm gonna be rich. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm thinking in terms of working terms. You know, you make $50 an hour. So you're like, oh, over an eight hour day, I got this much money over the 40 hour week. I got this. So that's how I'm thinking in comedy. I'm like, bro, I'm about to be rich as fuck. They like, what? I'm like, nigga, I got $50 for seven minutes, bro. So if every seven minutes I'm getting $50, imagine if I'm doing 45 minutes. Divide that by seven in the 50, bro. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. I'm like, what? 
It's so because I didn't know the structure of the pay, bro. And <laughs> shit, that ain't the case at all. <laughs> that ain't the case at all, man. That ain't the case at all. So that was my first paid gig, man. But my dream show, man, you know what? My one of my spoken, two of my spoken dreams of people to work with, I worked with, and it was so random. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna say Mike Epps was the first one. Okay. Me and my partner was out eating chicken wings, right? Mm -hmm. We was eating chicken wings, and uh, it was a poster of Mike Epps on the thing saying that he was coming to the improv, right? Mm -hmm. And my dude was like, hey man, that would be dope. Man, he's coming, you going? And I was like, Shh, man, you know what? I'm a go, but I'm really trying to work with him, dog. Right, right. And he was like, man, that's what's up. And we didn't say nothing else about it. The next morning, they called me to work with him, bro. True story. Wow. They called me to work with him, dog. And I was like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> she was what? like, I need to be yeah. there. I was like, what time I need to be there? Yeah, I was like, what time and where? It don't even matter. <laughs> Boom. And then the next one was, the next one was Cat Williams. I remember I was driving down the street with my chick at the time, and it came on the radio. And she was like, ah, oh, babe, babe, I want to go see Cat Williams. You want to go see Cat Williams? Let's go see Cat Williams. And I was like, man, only, only way I'm going to see Cat Williams is if I'm working with him on stage. And we start laughing and shit, right? Two months later, they called me to work with him, dog. Oh, wow. True story, man. Hey, uh, what's story. it called? Are you talk it up? Hey, yep. you, you be careful. <laughs> right. Be yeah, careful yeah. what you ask for, because you yeah. might get it. Oh, you get it, too. And it, it, it's scary, though. I'm telling you, it was scary, man. <laughs> How was it seeing those big crowds? It was scary. It was scary. <laughs> Very scary. You know what? I'm going to say, I worked with Mike Epps. It, it was just me and him. We did a two-man show. But we did, like, six shows. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It was at the Improv. Now, that was the first time that every show during a weekend that I'd been on was extra packed mm. and extra black. You know what I'm saying? My first eight years in comedy, I was only booked on white shows because I went through a white club with a white booker who right. set up white shows, right? Right. So it wasn't until I got in the improv mm -hmm. when I did black shows, my first black show. I knew it was a difference, just being a real nigga, so to speak. You know it's gonna be different, but I didn't know it was a difference. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like, what's it's the a difference. It's a different nigga. Okay, I'm gonna tell you this. This a subtle, slight thing you could recognize. So say this a white venue, right? It's full of white people. The lines outside. I'm walking up. I'm on the poster. The white people's like, "Oh my God, it's you! You're on the poster." I know you're funny. Can't wait to see you. He's like, oh, great. Black venue. Sold out, lying outside. I'm on the poster. You walking up. Ah, oh, nigga, it's you. You on the poster, nigga, you better be funny. <laughs> 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 it's, a, it's totally fucking different, dog. It's totally different with the black crowd. Dog, it's like, you know, hey. white people, they like, you on the poster? Oh, I know you good. Everybody. Black people like, nigga, you on the poster? You better be good. I'm paying. $25 a piece, that's $50 for me and my girl. We got about two items a piece, so that's another $25, $30 a piece for both of us. It's a $100 night. Nigga, you better be funny. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, this shit's different, bro. It is different. There's, when there's you, definitely a different pressure, yeah, too. Yeah, when you go on the black, black shows, the whole vibe is different. You guys, you gotta think, because for us, it's an event. Right. It's a thing. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Dave. Hey, can you tell him chill down a little bit, bro? Just a little bit, bro. We about, we about to wrap it up, baby. They said wrap it up, man. They trying to party. Yeah, we about to wrap it up, baby. Just give us a minute, man. We trying we try to get a club what it needs. <laughs> Shit. You know what I'm saying? But uh, sometimes you can't do niggas like that. 
But with the niggas, it's the whole vibe is different. The music's loud when you go in there. Yeah. Everybody's talking. You got to think, you and your girl, nine times out of 10, one of them done went and got a babysitter. Y'all done got outfits and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. To come out to the shit. And so you looking at, you done bought an outfit, you done got a babysitter, you done bought two tickets. Now you got to buy basically four items when you in there. Mm -hmm. So your total night coming to a black show might be a $300 package. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Now, going to a white show, they don't go to comedy based off who it is. We go based off who it is. They go based off, we ain't got nothing to do. It's a comedy show. Let's go. Who's there? Who cares? Let's go. Right. So they not buying no outfits. They might have to get a babysitter. You know what okay. I'm saying? Right. But they buying two tickets and two drinks. You know, they're just here because we ain't got shit else to do. So they come with a whole different mindset. Right. If you're good, great. If you're not, uh, we got out, we had a good time. Right, right, With right. niggas? No. <laughs> nigga, you better be, you not good. This is a show. <laughs> nigga, I done wasted 300 motherfucking dollars. I told you we should, he sucks. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. They walk, black people walk past you and tell you, nigga, you was terrible. You ever get heckled? All the time. I, that's, how I, that's how I made my chops is getting heckled, bro. And that's how I became who I am, was getting heckled. You know what I'm saying? At first, I didn't know, you don't know how to handle it at first, because you don't know. You know, I done said something, and somebody done said something, and I said something, nobody laughed, and he said something, and everybody laughed and shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Getting heckled, now I look for it. Mm. I look for, I want you to say something. <laughs> yeah, crowd work. I'm crowd work, I'm king of crowd work. Ain't nobody in the world doing crowd work like me. I said it, <laughs> fact check me. Name somebody. I'm on the ass. Got names? <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely gonna follow up. <laughs> hey, everybody gonna see you something. <laughs> DJ Dukes is yeah, everybody gonna see you something, babe. So I definitely wanna say thank you for, for doing this. Um, yeah. Again, I love the fact of where you came from, where you are now, things that, that, that you gone through to, to, right. to build character, to build right. up uh, fellow NPAC member. 100%. So uh, w do you have any advice for anybody interested in either being a hype man or a comedian? As I'm, here's my advice for both, either being a hype man or a comedian. Don't do it. <laughs> it's a lot of sleepless nights, cuz. <laughs> it ain't for the week at all. Your skin got to be thick. Nah, nah, real shit. If you want to do it, do it. Whatever your dream is, I tell anybody, whatever you want to do, I don't care if you want to be a, a, a steamboat captain. <laughs> do it. Do it. Because anything you want to do, and I learned this, people say it, people say it. But anything that you want to do, you can do. You just have to do it. Now, you might have to go through the process mm -hmm. to get there. But you can do it. If you want to become a boxer, you can start the day boxing and shit. And look look at your progression from today versus a year from now. You know what I'm saying? Now, you might not fight the top of the top, but you can become a boxer. Right. If you, like, you wanted to, I remember when you wanted to become a DJ. What'd you start doing? You start hanging around with the DJ. Hey, you start crazy. asking questions. Start learning how to hook yeah. up the stuff. Sure. Now you start, hey, what I need? Oh, I need a metrodome so I can get my beats in the 94s and the 120s and mm -hmm. what goes with what. And eventually, you became that. Right, You know right, what I'm right, saying? Right. Mm -hmm. It's everything is repetition. If you want to be a comic, man, get your ass on stage. That's the only way you're going to get better is get on stage, practice, practice, practice. We talking about practice. <laughs> <laughs> you got to practice, 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 because, man, I'm going to tell you this. I don't want on stage doing comedy, but I've been booed off the stage to the utmost doing comedy. You know what I'm saying? And they both feel the same. When you win, it's the extreme of good. When you boo, you boo, it's the extreme of bad. But it's still the same emotional high. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's just a different way, man. So I tell everybody to do it. I never thought I'd be doing comedy like this. I thought everybody would know me as a comedian.
Shit, I be out of town. People be like, yo, ain't you the comedian? Be like, shit. Who, me? They be like, yeah. I be like, yeah. You know, I done met all the famous people. I done met all the famous black comics. I done met famous white comics. I done met just some great people doing comedy, man. And another good thing about it, too, is I get these type of opportunities to get interviewed by people that's cool, that's in the mix of entertainment and doing stuff, and it's always dope, dog. I'm like Kanye, dog. I do dope shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I do dope shit, bro. That's it, man. And there it is. Yours truly, DJ Deuce. This is The Rewind, and we have a true crowd pleaser, Mr. Eric Kimbrough. Hey, thank you, man. I appreciate you having me, bro. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, man, y'all support this podcast, man. Y'all support this. And support live comedy, live entertainment, period. Boom, boom. We're getting out of here. How let you, boy? Peace. Yeah, we out now. Y'all get back and let me watch them get real quiet.